Okay, so I'm going to try to go through this fast because uh, it's a lightning talk. Uh, this is about building all the things with SPAC, and, and we may find a solution to the previous talk's problem. Um, SPAC is used on a lot of HPC machines. So this is Fugaku. It's a big ARM 64 FX machine uh, in Japan. It's number one right now. And uh, you know we're, we're used on a whole lot of supercomputers, including some smaller sites around the world. Um, we have a pretty booming community. Uh, we have a lot of contributions from different organizations um, and almost 5,000 packages now. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, the problem is that uh, we're not as, you know, none of those things are quite as big as the C++ community. So if you look at package managers in the C++ world, we're here, here's VC package, here's Conan, here's Nix, and here's build two. So I guess we'd be build two. But, uh, you know, we'd like to be better known. So uh, we wanted to tell everyone uh, that SPAC is here. And uh, that's what this talk is about. So if you want to install SPAC, um, it's, it's a flexible package manager. You can, you can just download it from GitHub and go. All you need is uh, Python. And uh, if you want to install something, you could SPAC install HDF5. Um, I didn't know that the previous talk would be about HDF5, but it's, it's somewhat convenient. Um, and that will go and install and build HDF5 and all of its dependencies. That's not just a C++ package manager. You can build anything you want with SPAC. Um, you could build Fortran, you could build uh, C, you could build Python. We have lots of Python and R packages. Um, it's not language specific. Um, and what's different about SPAC from other package managers is it, it's very customizable. You can customize an install on the command line. So if you want to build HDF5 and just get an HDF5 version, which may be dangerous, as you heard in the prior talk, um, you can just say SPAC install HDF5. If you have specific needs for a particular version, you can do that. You can say, I want a particular version of it. Uh, you can say, I want to build with GCC. So you can say, hey, give me GCC 8.3.0 or GCC 9, as you heard previously. Um, you can say what build options you want. So you can customize that on the command line, too. Um, you can inject flags in the build if you want to. And we know about specific target microarchitectures. So you can say, I want to build for Skylake, or I want to build for Cascade Lake. You can just write that on the command line, and we have human understandable names for those things. Um, and all of that is customizable down to the dependencies, too. So um, you, you can tweak this lots and lots of different ways. Um, the packages, the way that we do this, they're parameterized with the simple Python DSL. You may have heard this before through Conan or some of the more popular C++ package managers. But it, basically, every package is a class. Um, it has a home page and a URL. This just looks familiar. It looks kind of like a homebrew package. Um, but you can have multiple versions, you can have build options, uh, you can have conditional dependencies and version ranges and things like that. And then the install logic all goes down here, and it's, it's templated by these parameters. So essentially, this stuff up here tells you the space of things you could install, and this stuff down here is how to install it. Um, it's simple but expressive. So if you look at SPAC packages, they tend to be quite a bit shorter than, say, Conan. So I did a quick comparison of some common ones. So Zlib is like 55 lines of code in SPAC and much longer in Conan. And Boost, a complicated one, is about half as long in SPAC as Conan. And this includes you know, all the versions and things that go in separate files in some of the other package managers. Um, we handle combinatorial complexity. So essentially, if you have a bunch of graphs that look like this um, and you want to install 60 different versions of them, um, we will do that. So we will hash those configurations and install all of the different versions of all of the things in different directories for you if you want to test uh, things like that. Uh, we use our paths pretty heavily to figure out uh, where dependencies live. So each of these directories where we install a package knows where its dependencies live, so you don't have to worry about setting up your environment to run something. Um, we have dependency resolutions. So basically, these things that you write on the command line are abstract specs. We have a resolver that takes that, turns it into a graph with some constraints on it, fills in all the blanks, and then stores really detailed information about what you built on disk, which you can then query. So if you're finding that your build explodes with one version of a library, and you want to see why, um, you can say, oh, that one was built with a version of Boost that is not compatible with my version of Boost. Um, like I said, we understand specific target microarchitectures. We actually have a separate Python library for this that will detect what kind of machine you're on, and it knows the compatibility of things. So you can do comparisons like, is Skylake compatible with Broadwell? Or is Zen compatible with x86-64? Um, and you can query those things inside your packages. So it's easy to do things like, say, should I add the AVX512 argument to this thing? Should I add these other litany of SIMD args? Um, we support environments with uh, manifests. So that's a spec.yaml file that you could just version in a repository. And we'll spit out a lock file with exactly what we built, including all those configuration options that you saw earlier. Um, so it's easy to reproduce something functionally with a manifest and then resolve it differently on different systems or reproduce something exactly with a lock file where you want to reproduce the exact same thing 
um, in a separate build on the same system. Um, the other kind of cool thing we do is uh, this syntax isn't limited to just you know, the command line. You can use it in these environment files. So if you want your manifest to have a build matrix like this, where you want to build five different packages with three different MPI implementations or some other dependency like BLOSS or LawPack, and three different compilers and two different targets, you can do that. And you can generate 90 different builds of five packages. And that doesn't include the dependency. So that's a whole lot of builds. Um, so that's where the build all the things comes from. Um, you can also take that and generate a CI pipeline from it. So if you make a manifest like this with lots of different packages in it, you can map them to containers, build them in a cube cluster, build them on bare metal or whatever. Um, we'll generate a bunch of jobs that run in parallel in CI to, to build all of that. And you can either cache built binaries or, like the previous presenter said, you can build everything from source all the time. Um, and uh, other stuff that I don't really have time to talk about, um, Windows support is coming in the next year. That's probably the thing that will kill us the most in this community. So we're working on that. Um, it's not just for C++. It's for anything. You can build lots of packages in parallel on a cluster even without GitLab. Um, and we have this virtual dependency model that I haven't seen other places except for maybe Gen2, where essentially we don't depend on MPI. We, we depend on the MPI API. And you can swap in dependencies for these types of things instead of having to write a package per oh, configuration. Where did that slide go? That was crazy. Can you see it? No. No? Nope. Because you're at six minutes. Uh, okay. 